All right, throughout the course of this video, we're going to be looking at the timing and totals expected for rainfall with Hurricane Hillary. We're going to be looking at some of the winds that are expected, some of the different watches that are in place, and just break down the overall impacts that are expected with this storm. So you can see the very clearly defined eye right there, and Hurricane Hillary is now a Category 4 hurricane, meaning it has sustained winds of 145 miles per hour. And the reason that it's been strengthening over the last couple of days is because it's over very warm water. As long as your water is over 80 degrees, it's going to continue to strengthen. And then right as we see it get into the cooler water, where you see that boundary between more of the reddish color and more of the yellow to greenish color, that's where we cross down below 80 degrees. And then that's the point where the storm is actually going to start weakening. So looks like it strengthens up into a category four, and then it starts to decrease in intensity down to a category three, into a two. At that point, it's a category one. And then the big question mark will be how strong the storm will be as it pushes into Southern California. Right now, we do have a tropical storm watch in place. This is actually the first tropical storm watch in the history of California. And the exact timing on that is still a bit up in the air. There's different models saying different things about where the storm's going to hit, how much wind we're going to have, how much rain we're going to have, but it does look like there's a very widespread flood watch out there. You can see it goes all the way from Southern California, stretching up almost all the way up into the South Lake Tahoe area. So that gives you a good idea of the track that the storm is going to be taking once it does move into California. It's mostly impacting southeastern and eastern parts of the state, not seeing very big impacts for the central coast or the Bay Area. Now you can also see that looking at the forecast rain amounts. I'd say the key place that I'll be looking at will be the deserts and the mountains, especially the eastern side of the mountains. You can see in central southern California right there, that's where we have some places potentially even picking up six to 10 inches of rain which in many of our deserts, like Palm Springs usually has about 4.93 inches of rain per year. They could see that in the course of 12 hours and potentially even double that in the course of a day or two. So that's where we have the impacts for some flash flooding, as well as any impacts that might come from wind. I think the flooding will be where we see the largest impacts from the storm though. So now let's just break down the exact timing of the rainfall as it moves into California. We start to see some rain showing up as early as Saturday morning. Looks like it's still pretty moderate by about Saturday at 1 p.m. And then you notice it's mostly Southern California stretching up into the Southern Sierra. And then Sunday 2 p.m., that's where you start to see more of the yellow to reddish color showing up on the map. That's where you have the heavier rainfall coming in. And then according to this model, Sunday 6 p.m. is when that low pressure is directly off of San Diego. And remember that the strongest winds and your heaviest rain will typically be on the northeastern side of your hurricane. So that's where we could see some pretty significant impacts, especially for areas like San Diego. Now, as we get into early Monday mornings, around one to two in the morning, that's where a lot of the heavy rain has moved up with the low itself up into the Sierra. Although we still do have some showers showing up over Southern Kira, Southern California, kind of just lingering all the way into Monday. And then by Monday evening, looks like there's still some clouds out there, still some moisture, but the real intense part of the storm has wrapped up at that point. So just looking at the forecast storm totals, this kind of sums it up for Southern California. You can see the area that we're looking at right there. Main place I'll be looking at, I would say, is the mountains and the deserts, six to 10 inches in the mountains, one to three along the coast. So. That's not as out of the ordinary if you were to compare it to a winter storm, but it's certainly out of the ordinary for this time of the year. And then down in the deserts, that's where we could be picking up more rain in a couple of days than we normally see in an entire year. Now, just looking at the storm, this is the GFS model. So this is the American model. This one does have it going a little bit more to the west, so that's where we could see some rainfall moving into places like the central coast. But again, main impacts for the storm, Southern California, the deserts, the mountains, and then stretching up into the Sierra as well. And then when it comes to the winds, 
That's where, again, the main thing I want to emphasize is that it's a Category 4 hurricane right now, but it's not going to be a hurricane by the time it gets into California. It will have dropped down to tropical storm force and maybe even lower than that by the time it moves in. This shows your tropical storm winds right there. And where you see kind of the yellowish color, that's where there's about a 50 to 60% chance of tropical storm winds. And then the blue is where you have 10 to maybe 30% chance of those tropical storm winds that are greater than 39 miles per hour sustained. So that kind of sums up the timing and totals for your rain and winds out there. But now let's actually look at why the water is so warm right now. And it really ties into El Nino. So during a normal year, most of the warm surface water gets pushed to the western Pacific by the trade winds. And then we get a lot of upwelling on the eastern Pacific that leads to very cold water here. So less hurricane activity. And then you also get some descending air instead of rising air. So that reduces storm potential. Now in an El Nino year, that's where some of the trade winds aren't as strong pushing the warm water to the west. So some of that warm water pushes back to the East Pacific. So warm water is like the fuel for a hurricane. And remember I was mentioning that 80 degree line that you have on hurricanes where above 80 degrees, the storm's going to strengthen. Below 80 degrees, it's going to weaken. When El Nino happens, more of that warm water is in the Eastern Pacific. So it just continues the amount of time and the intensity that the storm can be strengthening. So just the summary on El Nino's impacts there, it is usually wetter than normal throughout California, but this is really the important one. Trade winds weaken, warm water rushes back. We have very above average ocean temperatures right now. And then we also have less wind shear. So you see more hurricane activity around Mexico. And then that, in this case, is moving up into Southern California. So looking at the overall key messages for Hurricane Hillary, I'd say my main concern is the flash flooding that's possible. With that, you could also have some landslides out there, so we'll keep an eye on that. And again, just want to emphasize, this is a very rare event. We do not normally see tropical storms pushing into California. So we'll be definitely keeping a very close eye on this. The big question mark is if it will still be a tropical storm by the time it moves into California. I would say that's a pretty safe bet. But for the central coast, that's where we have very minimal impacts expected because the storm looks to be pushing to the east of us. So that sums up Hurricane Hillary. Hopefully you learned something throughout the course of this video. And thanks for watching.